Welcome back, everybody, to the Southern Gateway Chorus live stream. My name is Zach Holman. And my name is Joe Hunter. And, and uh, uh, we got a pretty good show coming up for you, I think. I'm, I'm excited. It's been two weeks. We missed you on 4th of July. Joe, how was your 4th of July? Uh, very explosive. It was very good. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, you know, having moved from New York uh, to someplace not New York, uh, <laughs> you know, moving to a place where people are allowed to fire off fireworks legally. Yeah. Um, how about that? Uh, people people seem to do it a lot. Yeah. 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 And I think, I, I, and, in, and in the nice part was it, it, it all was actually just fireworks. So it was good. Yes. That's that's pretty important when it comes to a fireworks thing is that they're just those. Just fireworks. You yeah. Know, whereas if I was hearing that in New York, I would have been ducking. But yeah. It's okay. I tell you what, I spent a little too much time outside, I think. Uh, my skin is now uh, shedding more than my hair. So. That's not fun for me. Well, you've got that kind of yeah. You have a little bit more of that summer look to you. I mean, I've, I've, I'm I'm getting that wrinkled old man kind of look from being out in the sun a lot myself. <laughs> good, 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 good. Well, Joe, t uh, tell our audience real quick who do we have on this week? Yeah, it, it's it's really great. You know, over the last couple of weeks, you know, uh, you've you you've gotten to hear from a number of wonderful uh, and talented uh, judges representing music and performance, mm -hmm. and and today we have somebody. Uh, from the singing world, from the very top of uh, the singing category, a board of review person, uh, someone I've known for years and uh, idolized as a one, not only just a wonderful singer, but a great friend yeah, man. And, 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 and a talent and just a, a, a person that, um, you know, has put up with actually doing some coaching for some of my quartets <laughs> and, he, and he lived to tell the tale. Put up, put up with is a good term to use for that. You know, um, but anyway, so we have Jay Butterfield is joining us today, and uh, uh, we're just so thrilled to have him and to be able to talk a little bit from the singing category standpoint. So welcome, Jay. Well, thank you. I'm excited. It should be a good time. I have a lot of friends out there in uh, Southern Gateway land, and uh, it's just, it's really cool to be here and share some time with you and some ideas, and hopefully we'll get some, maybe some questions and, and a a little bit of a opportunity to discuss a number of things. Sure, man. So real quick, before we get too far, for anybody <laughs> uh, for anybody watching who might not know who you are and what you've done, can you just give us the 30 to 60 seconds, who is Jay? Okay, I'll go quick. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of music degrees, and uh, that helped me to really further my barbershop world. I uh, did a lot of uh, uh, school choral music and school music for a number of years. Actually got one of those crazy school Grammy awards for whatever it's worth. Not much. I didn't get a raise or anything. Uh, but it was, a, it's a, you know, just kind of nice to have done that sort of thing. But worked with um, barbershopping all of my adult life and have directed a number of courses, had some quartets that appeared on the international stage and uh, even made top 20. And that was kind of exciting. And now I'm the musical director of a course in Hershey, Pennsylvania called Parkside Harmony, right there on the shirt. Yeah. So that's the story and I'm sticking with it. I, I live in Charleston, South Carolina right now, but I travel uh, to Pennsylvania on a regular basis. I, I, I gotta it. say, it's very obvious that you're a singing guy because out of everybody we've ever had on the show, including myself, you're the first one who you do your intro and I, I almost got lulled for a second, I'm not joking. Yes, this is. I'm. Oh Jay well, you know, there's that. It was that timbre thing. That, yeah. <laughs> right. He, no one is ever under that illusion when I'm speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. It's a little different. Uh, so, Jay, real quick, you're 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 in singing land, um, and we've you know we've kind of gone over it again for those who aren't necessarily barber shoppers necessarily 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 uh, performances. <laughs> how it looks and how it feels music is what the chart says singing is what give give us the give us the rundown of that yeah we, you know we like to think that singing is the core of all of it but we know that all three categories revolve around one another you don't have barbershop without music without without performance and without singing we we start from the standpoint of uh, basically kind of five areas we want to talk about is the music in tune? Um, is, are the voices, uh, the vocal quality appropriate 
uh, you know, as anybody straining or pressing or anything like that, is the ensemble singing as a unit, you know, attacks and releases, synchronization, a lot of that kind of brainy stuff is up front. Uh, a fourth area that we actually score and I want to talk about tonight, hopefully, is expansion, the quality of expansion. And that means, does it ring? Um, the music guys say lock and ring. Um, the performance guys say, does it make me giggle? Uh, or something like that. Uh, oh, but thrilled. literally- uh, Goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it, that's yeah. it. Yeah, the goosebumps. Yeah. And uh, finally, um, we talk about expression, vocal expression. And I'd like to talk about that too, because that's where we're shifting in the category. So we have those five things, kind of the five fingers on a, on a hand that make up our main points that we try to evaluate and give feedback to singers on when we have the opportunity to do, to do that in the contest or coaching setting. Okay. And, um, you know, some lead to the others. For instance, if something's not a unit, it's not in tune, uh, it doesn't have great um, like we're using inappropriate tone quality, vocal vocal quality, we're going to lack expression or we're going to lack expansion and it's not going to ring and it's not going to be pleasing to the ear or it's, it's going to be uncomfortable for the listener. And so we try to work on all those things to, um, to get improvement, except we're shifting a little bit. So we can, we can touch on that whenever it's time. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's, I mean, you want to, it might be time. I, I, think I, it's time. I, I just want to, you know, the one thing I've heard more Jay in the, in the last couple of years, and, I, and, and I'm very much, I, I kind of resonate to it is, is you guys talk about healthy vocal quality. You guys speak about vocal health and you talk about, um, and, and what's nice about that is I, I'm hearing less about there is, there is one, there is only one way, you know, uh, and yet, people, I, I, I've always thought, well, you know, there's Mel Torme on one side, and you might have uh, Tony Bennett on the other, and yet they're both fantastic, and they both, I think, are doing what they do very, very well. And how can you say, well, well, maybe Mel Torme is way, way too dark, or you know, uh, Tony Bennett has way too much pressure in his voice? But you guys have kind of, I think, reconciled towards a lot more of that now than it used to be. Yeah, we really have because our, our position really is if you're doing things appropriately, the best way for your voice, if you are treating your voice well, you don't need to try to sound like somebody else. You need to sound like you. You need to feel what's happening in your voice. Um, you need to feel what's going on with your instrument and allow that to be its best possible self. You don't want to sound like I'm sorry, Joe Connolly, if you're listening, you don't want to necessarily sound like Joe Connolly or sound like any other particular lead or bass or baritone. But what you really want is to sound like yourself, your best version of yourself. So we've moved more towards more away from this is the way it should sound towards how does your voice become its best self. And then when you make a quartet, how do you get all four voices to become their best selves? Not to necessarily try to sound just like the lead. And that is a shift as well. Because when we, were, when we, we used to do that and everybody would sing really into the lead's voice and they ended up doing things that were a little artificial with the instrument. So yep. we're moving away from that and hoping that the voice, the natural timbres of the voice match. That's probably what you want to do when you first form a quartet is do the timbres match. If they don't match, don't try to force them to match. Have a good time, say goodbye and find some other <laughs> folks to sing with. Because if you're trying to force it, you're, you're doing round peg square hole sure. for the entire life of the ensemble. So Better to use good practices, treat the voice well. Now when we get to a chorus, we do tend to sing more toward a central sound. What does our lead sections sound like and how do we all get there but we want to do it in the most natural appropriate way for the voices a lot of times that is done through using good uh, technique the understanding of vocal science and also just doing a little bit of vowel matching rather than timbre matching not shifting what's happening here but just adjusting the shapes a little bit 
hopefully that gets at where you were going with that, Joe. Yeah, and I, yep. I, so that, yeah. That, that, that brings up something kind of interesting to me. You were mentioning how uh, it's not about trying to sound like a specific somebody else, but making your voice the best it can be. So I remember through all of my younger years of barbershop, having been in this for about 18 years now, um, there was a lot of the bass is supposed to be big and boomy and the baritone needs to fill the sound between the lead and the bass and, and, and all that stuff. So how much of that is still there and how much of it is, eh, it doesn't really matter as long as you're singing properly. Where, where do those like roles per se come in? Or do they? I think that's a great question. And really it's, it's about what your voice, where does your voice live? Okay. If your voice lives in the bass range, then you sing bass. If your voice lives in the baritone range, sing and lead and tenor and so forth. Rather than trying to, to force this up. Oh shoot, I can fake like a bass and I'm actually the bass section leader in addition to being the musical director of my chorus, bass section leader, but that's because they, we didn't have anybody else at the time. So I don't try to force that sound and nor should anyone. What we try to do is sing your voice. So sing your voice and be as lyrical as possible in doing that. So thinking of that as being sort of almost like the bass part is a melody rather than a bass drum or a bass guitar. And sometimes we do imitate instruments, but that's called on called for in the arrangement as opposed to what we're trying to do, the voice. Or if you're going to say, oh, all the tenors should sound like this and all the leads should sound like this and all the baritones should sound like that, all the basses, that's just a lot of work. And what you really need to sound like is you. This is called so appropriate wait time. Yeah, yeah, that's appropriate wait time. Yeah, you know, we're just also shocked. We were shocked and stunned into silence, which is unusual for us. It but, it, oh. it does kind of blow me away. I mean, like that, you know, have I'm, all of us have done this for a bit, and that's a that's a very it's a very new thing. I think there used to be, possibly still is for those who don't know about it, uh, a little bit of a stigma outside of the barbershop world in a more choral world where like barbershoppers, oh, they don't sing right, they do bad things, and and it's. It's so much not that. Like I've known that for a bit, but like that that right there is just the proof of it. It's just that's that's not where we live. We're trying to do the best vocal things that we can. And I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and we're applying we're applying voice science now mm -hmm. more than ever. And voice science changes. It's not a fixed thing. Science evolves as we learn more about the voice or or any particular area of study. Mm -hmm. But I, I do want to say that not all coaches are there yet yep and in some cases not all ju judges are totally there yet sure we're we're also evolving in our understanding of science and the voice and of our art form yeah i've, I've right, had I mean, we, i've had coaching we, we, sessions where we, they've tried to oh you're supposed to you're the baritone you have to sound like this and make it a bigger and I'm like that's not i, I don't do that yeah well, we've, we've been we've been seeing this in terms of talking among the various categories right right zach i mean in, in, in performance, we've been saying the same, almost the same kind of things about not reinventing the wheel in terms of what good performance is and looking at the outside world of entertainment and, 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 and getting our cues from there, you know, and, and, and saying, you know, rather than looking inward to barbershop for it, you know, like look outward to the world of real entertainment. And we, and, and we point to the singing category as an area where there is a body of information there is a world out there that says good singing is good singing is good singing and it sounds like that the singing category is is even more embracing of that direction and of that science that works with that we're trying to do the same kind of thing in performance and i think music has already gone somewhere towards that too which i think is all really healthy uh for the art mm -hmm. form and then for the hobby sure so you know, yeah, and let's talk a little bit about expansion then as a, yeah. as a scorable part of, of uh, judging. Yeah. So it, it, we're theoretically supposed to score expansion, but at the last category school, what we really talked about is, is expansion something you can score or is it a byproduct of the other areas? Is it a byproduct of singing together as a unit, of having appropriate timbre, tone color, um, vocal quality is it a byproduct of proper intonation, where we are we are com 
completely aware of our place in the court, our balance, our tuning, and we do it right. Is expansion even a byproduct of appropriate expression? And, and I think our theory is, I believe that we are fairly well committed to saying expansion is more of a byproduct than it is a scorable item. It is the goosebumps and all that. But what we really need to focus on is expression because that brings, uh, if the other things are together, intonation, uh, uh, tone quality and unit and expression is what brings that song to life. And guess what? That's what the performance guys are talking about too. And I, I know you'll verify that, but how yeah. do we express, how do we bring the meaning of that song and the composer's intent and the lyricist's intent to life? What do we do with our instrument to help those lyrics jump off the page and into someone's heart? And the left brain guys, but it is where we need to move. I like, I like that. I like that. You never refer to it as the voice. I, I've I've heard this happen a lot with coaches and with 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 singing judges and stuff, but it's never the voice. It's always the instrument. It's never your voice. It's never your vocal mechanism. It's always the instrument. I like that a lot. That's a very good way. Oh, to cool! Put it. I didn't realize uh, I did that. Oh yeah. yeah. It's 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 interesting that when you, when you look at how these categories work together, and you say, well, there's a lot of overlap. And that's true, and I think that's by design. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you look at it, you know you could say, well, in 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 one case, in the case of uh, presentation, performance, whatever you want to call it, that's you're looking at the result. You're looking at how people feel, how has it made people feel, what's the what's the final result in terms of how what's happened. Music has been how do you get there? How do you achieve that? From going from the page to to the product, right, is all that all the work that gets you there. So here it's moving it off of the sheet of paper. And then the next part is adjudicating the result. I look at singing like it drives the whole thing. You know, singing is the instrument. Singing is the is that that is the vehicle, you know, to, to, to get all this done. You know, it's via singing that you bring it off the page and that you then affect an audience, right? So singing really does underpin it. And as much as I hate to give props to singing like that, you know, obviously it's a, it's, it's a singing <laughs> hobby and, 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 you, and you start there. I, I really think that's where it all starts. Yeah. And when we think of the old title of BHS, Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing, in America, it doesn't say barbershop quartet music in America or performance, but but they're in they're they're intertwined so so critically that you almost can't separate them. Mm -hmm. One may be the driver, but the other is the chassis, and the third one is the the motor, you know, the the engine, all those pieces. So they're all there. I thought you were and you don't go anywhere without all three. It's interesting, though, that, you know, if the focus in singing moves more towards expression, right, Jay, is what you're talking about. Um, I have heard rumor that there is some um, uh, initiative afoot right now to kind of rewrite the category description of singing a little bit. And, and is it to emphasize that a little bit more, to, to, to look at the expression piece of it a little more? Well, I hinted at it in the earlier part here. Uh, when we rewrite that category, we, we really are talking about taking expansion and in essence, putting it on the back page as a asterisk. <laughs> because we, you know, we love expanded sound. There's no question about that, but that's sort of like um, the Indy 500 is a, car race it's not a checkered flag the result is the checkered flag the winner but the excitement is not that last second it's in the doing and seeing the you know people change lanes and do all that fun stuff that happens the same thing with singing it's in the process not the product so this the the process of singing is what we want to score and that's expression and that's unit it's how well the song 
fits the ensemble and how well the ensemble uses the tools at their disposal to bring the song to life. And are there distractors like, like poor vocal quality or out, you know, out of tune singing or chords that aren't tuned correctly uh, or are they not synced up? But in reality, that expression has been at the bottom of the page. So if you can imagine that, we, uh, we, we have treated expression as if it's only something for the A-level quartets and choruses. Everybody else really can't, they can't. Well, that's so wrong. It's like, every, it's like that's, that's upside every, down, isn't it? That's almost upside down, I think. Exactly. Every performer, every performing ensemble, performing ensemble can express at every level, D level, C level, B level, A level. And we have to be able to nurture that in our performers. So, you know, in singing, if we haven't, if it's been the, the afterthought, it's been in the wrong place. Yes, we have to do those other mechanical things proper alignment and making sure that we have this and that, but expression is what makes it come to life. Otherwise, it's just a mechanical uh, process, process for any process? Canadians. Well, depending on, yeah, when I talk to Marty Lovick or someone from Canada, it's a process. But otherwise, yeah, great, it's good. <laughs> Poor fellow. <laughs> so, so Jay, uh, I hope you don't mind. I, I like to, when we have people with perspectives like yours, I like to um, <clears throat> take advantage of them. And, uh, I have a question that I ask a lot, and I, and I want to ask you too, because I, I feel like I'm going to get the same answer based on everything you've been saying. I feel like I'm going to get the same answer, but I need to hear it. I need to hear it from you, um, from the perspective of somebody who definitely is not on this call, who might be uh, trying to up the ranks in a quartet that definitely nobody in this call sings with. Um, if you had one piece of advice, <laughs> thanks. If you had one piece of advice. <laughs> to raise that singing score of said hypothetical quartet, what would it be? I don't think it's going to be the same answer. Okay, cool. Um, I love when the, I think it's hypothetically somebody would love when it's different answers. Let's say, let's, let, let's, well, well, let, you, know, you know what, Zach, we can help out a little here. Let's, let's hypothetically yes. say this group is right around an 80, 81. Some, something uh, maybe in that area. Right, right in that area. Okay, has has made it to international, but would like to go higher in those rankings. Um, does a lot of things technically well already. Uh, young and energetic, just hypothetically, let's say they're young and energetic, <laughs> and, you know, and, and and have pretty 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 darn good technical skills already. A lot, a lot of our audience is like that. A lot of our audience is like that. Yeah. Well, sure. And so technical skills will get you very far. They might get you even to a ninety but they will not get you to a um, high A. They will not get you to the A plus. The only thing that really gets you there is believability, expression, um, uh, choosing the appropriate literature that you, can, that you can in your heart say this means something to me and being able to portray that with your instrument and your body and your face and your mind to the audience. Having the audience Feel that without distractions is the only way that I can think of to get to that top level. Uh, I'll give you an example <clears throat> um, that actually sort of belies what I just said. But a chorus in the last international sang a technically perfect performance. And one of my colleagues in the pit, I was in the pit, and one of my colleagues gave them a hundred. And then another chorus came and sang better, not technically better, emotionally, expressively, believably better. And that score could not be anything less than 100. And actually two 100s. And so you can say you could do that super, super, super technically perfect performance and maybe get that. But most of us aren't going to. Most of us are going to get to a certain ceiling, a sort of an um, a impenetrable ceiling that without expression and believability and um, heartfelt uh, emotion and all the, the hidden tools that go with that, you're never going to get above, above that ceiling. Only somebody like zero eight might get above that ceiling, just as a hypothetical. Hypothetically, yeah. Um, but they're going to get beat and they're going to get beat 
because somebody else brings it from the heart. Meant it more. So that, that I, I here's the, okay. So <laughs> you've heard this, right? I got to collect this for a second. I get it. I, this is the, it's the weirdest thing to me. I get it from the performance guys. I guess I just have a hard time with the difference. I get it from the performance guys being like, yes, yeah, so you're supposed to come from here. It's like, bruh, like, right. I get that. Music guys. Yeah, you have to mean it. What do you mean? The paper doesn't mean anything. Tell me about the paper. And, and I'm feeling the same thing here, right? It's like, yes, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my instrument can per convey an emotion, but the instrument the instrument does not feel it. That's so, that's so weird to me. I gotta, that's a, or hypothetically somebody might feel weird about that. <laughs> so, so if you, if you put it all together, Zach, over what we've heard over the last six weeks, yeah. Talking to various judges, right. Started with saying like, what's your bag? Mm -hmm. So who are you? What's your identity? You know? And so you go right back to that. That was what George Gibbs said. That's and that's right. what George Gibbs said. Um, somebody like uh, um, Peter Neuschel said, right? Th then you go to what Mark Kettner said, which is, you know, trying to, again, be real, believable mm -hmm. from the heart. And then you hear what Kevin, uh, Kevin Keller and Tom Gentry said, and now also what Jay said. It's all aligns perfectly, right? It's all seems to be all going in the same direction. Yeah. Probably not always the easiest answer because being the best you, I mean, I heard Jay say it, be the best you you can be. Yep. But it's about the important word there beyond just best is you, mm -hmm. right? The you part is so critical in this. You know, uh, we're wonderful at being cover bands, right? I mean, that's what we do. We <laughs> yep. cover other barbershoppers. I, well, yeah. and I think about a simple phrase like you, you broke my heart. If I were to say you broke my heart, I said the words and people know what that means. Mm -hmm. But I, I would want to say it with a level of sincerity and depth of emotion that uses different parts of my instrument. You broke my heart. And that's a different, entirely different feeling. Matter of fact, from a physical standpoint, I got goosebumps. I got, I, I flushed a little. I'm having a, I'm having stuff going on because I emotionally was invested in that um, statement and that song the same, the same way. And it doesn't have to be a sad song. It could be a happy song, but if I were to break it down as a singing judge on the left brain side, I don't know if left brain for you, but anyway, on the left brain side, I would say, okay, so the, the, the vocal closure was, was less intense there was less contact between the vocal folds when I did that. I added air to the sound. I also had a little bit of a raise in the cheek muscles when I did that. And I used a little bit uh, more soft consonants in certain places and a little bit more um, explosive consonants in others. But mostly those soft broke my heart. I, so those are the technical things that were done, but I felt it and I... I think that's where we have to go. Right. And so that's that's speaking performance language for me. I mean, I, I, I understand that totally, I mean, thoroughly. And I think music would understand it the same way. And that's why, Zach, you know, when you think about it, we're all kind of almost judging the same the thing. The same thing, yes. You know, mm -hmm. we just do it from a different lens. And with different levels of expertise. I mean, Jay comes with an incredible, as, as you heard, early on an incredible resume and background in his areas of expertise. Uh, I'm a performance dilettante, but I do come from it from a performer's, you know, with a, with a performer's uh, kind of eye towards it. Sure. You know, and then you have people who are geniuses like Tom and, and uh, Kevin who come at it with that musical side, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's all, but it's all through the same lens. Does that, for those of, for anybody who's out listening to us, you, you, you start to see, kind of the um the challenge that we have but also the beauty of what we do you know the beauty of what we do as judges and the fact that this overlap exists for a reason and as long as we're cool with it and i i i am I, I, and i think most of us are you know we kind of we kind of see each other as brothers doing the same the same job just with with, with different tool sets does that make sense yeah. jay i mean kind of yeah it does we're we're the in a way, we're the surgical team, you know, and there, there are some people that open, there are people that monitor these things. 
There are people that monitor those things. There are people that close. There's people that do the, the, the aftercare. We're, we're that team as judges, and we each have specialties, but we're all trying to accomplish the same goal, the health of the patient. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the health of the, of the art form, right? The art form, the hobby, the patient, all of it, right? It's like it all kind of fits in. For me, it's like that's my, that, that's my main goal in being a judge and, and, and being involved with this is to have this thing be healthy and, and mm-hmm. grow and be um, attractive to more people. And I, and I think Joe, I think my favorite part of of every of that entire monologue just there was the fact that um, uh, the fact that Jay's message definitely showed up <laughs> from the Zoom yeah. call right over you and said that uh, when they kick him out of singing, can he join the uh, performance? I was hoping that everybody could see that. Oh, yeah. It was right in front of Joe. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, that might be... I did see it. I did see it. That might yes. be my second favorite thing that's ever happened on the stream. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Well, Jay, I think we're going to wrap it. Thank you so much for having us. Or for having us. Thank you so, mu- so much for coming on the show. Uh, is there anything you want to close with? Any last remarks you want to make? No, just the, the this thing that we do is... It's nothing we have to do as barbershop singers. In fact, there's a lot of other things you could do. So when you do it, and if you really want to grow the chorus and the quartets to the to your newest heights, do it from your heart. Use the techniques and strategies and really dedicate yourself to being the best you you can possibly be. And you'll be happy with the outcome, period. I'll take it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, sure, Joe, thanks. any last from remarks? My yeah, from my standpoint, I just want to say I'm looking forward to seeing, I'm going to be seeing Jay in person. And we'll be both at a school working with our new younger candidates who are coming in to become new judges. Gotcha. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, always an exciting and I think one of the most valuable things that us old guys can do. <laughs> is, to be tra- is to be training that next level of people, the, the people who really get it and can take this and run with it sure, and, and, and make this go. And it's so exciting to see that next generation because they are really, they really get it. They really get it. And so that, that is more, that's again, we don't have to be doing that. We're going and we're doing that because uh, we love it so much. And I, I, I'm going to be loving to see Jay that way at that time. Although I'm sure we'll both be underwater for about two days. Uh, with, Again, that's uh, so crazy around. that you can hold your hold your breath that long. I didn't know you could do that. It, it'll feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a scuba diver, so I'll have tanks. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Fantastic. All right. Well, that'll go ahead and wrap it for this week. Uh, on behalf of Southern Gateway Chorus, I uh, hope you all have a great week. My name is Zach Coleman. My name is Joe Hunter, and Jay, thank you so much. See you around. Take it easy. Until